Hey guys, so we're going to start talking about uh, finding limits algebraically, and before we do that, uh, we need to know some properties or some rules of limits here. So these uh, rules here are going to really make it much easier to uh, find limits algebraically. So we've been dealing a lot with uh, finding limits by looking at graphs, and that's good to know how to do, but uh, you might not always have a graph to work with, or the graph you have might not really be very helpful. Um, anyway, let's get started with the properties here. So first one says, limit as x approaches c of a equals what? Well, uh, c and a represent any real numbers, okay? any real numbers at all, 0, 1, anything negative, etc., etc. Um, they could be the same thing, they could be different, doesn't really matter. But anyway, uh, limit as x approaches c of some number is just that number. So whatever's happening with c uh, doesn't matter. So a is just a constant, okay? So if you take a limit as x approaches any number of a constant, you just get that constant back. Okay, so simple enough. Um, part two, or property two, uh, limit as x approaches c of a times f of x equals, uh, this property is nice because it tells you, um, well, first of all, what is this? It's a times the limit as x approaches c of f of x. So this property is nice because it tells you that uh, if you have a constant multiple inside of a limit, you could just pull it on out. So limit as x approaches c of a constant times a function of x equals that constant times the limit. So constant multiples can be pulled out, which is really helpful. Uh, property three, really this is two properties, but they're so similar, um, it's best to just squish them together into one and uh, in order to save time and space too. So, property three, limit as x approaches c of f of x plus or minus g of x equals what? Equals limit as x approaches c of f of x plus or minus the limit as x approaches c of g of x. So again, this is really two properties here. This says uh, limit as x approaches c of f of x plus g of x equals limit as x approaches c of f of x plus limit as x approaches c of g of x. And same thing with the minus sign. Uh, limit as x approaches c of f of x minus g of x equals limit as x approaches c of f of x minus limit as x approaches c of g of x. Okay? So in other words, uh, limit of a sum equals the sum of the limits and limit of a difference equals the difference of the limits. So that's a really useful property. It basically tells you that if you have a limit of a sum or a difference, you can split it up into two or more limits. All right, so uh, property four, limit as x approaches c of f of x times g of x. Here's a limit of a product, and this property tells us that we can split it up as a product of two limits. So this is limit as x approaches c of f of x times limit as x approaches c of g of x. All right. So these square brackets that I'm putting here right now, they're not really necessary, um, but they do make things a little more clear. So it's this limit multiplied by this limit separately now. So limit of a product equals product of the limits. All right. So property five, limit as x approaches c of f of x divided by g of x. Here we have a limit of a quotient. So this is going to be equal to the quotient of the limits. Limit as x approaches c of f of x divided by limit as x approaches c of g of x. Alright? Uh, it's worth writing down here, there is a restriction here. Um, we're dividing, and remember you can never ever divide by zero no matter what else is happening. You can never do that. So in order for this to make sense, property five here, in order for it to make sense, uh, we need to guarantee that limit as x approaches c of g of x does not equal zero. If it does equal zero, then you can't use this property and you'll have to figure something else out. And we'll see some examples of stuff like that later on. But for now, um, if you want to use this property, then you can never have the denominator equal to zero. Okay, so property six, limit as x approaches c of f of x to the r, where r represents any real number. So what we have here is uh, this real number in the exponent, the function is being raised to this exponent, and then we're taking the limit of it. So what property 6 is going to tell us is that we can take the limit and push it inside of the exponent. 
So basically this is equal to limit as x approaches c of f of x, and then that whole thing is being raised to the r. So that's a really nice property there. It basically tells us that we can take a limit and push it inside of an exponent. So um, this applies to any exponent, you know, not just integers. So if it's f of x squared, cubed, fourth, etc., yeah, that'll work. But it also works for uh, any real exponent. So fractional powers, if it's f of x to the two thirds and things like that. Um, now you want to be careful if it's an even root. So like r could be one half. That's a square root, right? That's also valid. Um, but if you're taking a square root of negative stuff, you, you got to watch out for that. So that's uh, just some technical details to worry about there. But anyway, in general, we do have this property here. Limit as x approaches c of f of x to the r equals this limit all raised to the r. Okay. Now another thing we should point out here um, with properties 2, 3, and 4, uh, and 5, I guess in 6 also, um, these properties only make sense if each of these limits is defined. So here, uh, limit as x approaches c of a times f of x equals a times the limit. If this limit is not defined, then this is not going to make any sense here. And likewise for 3, 4, and 5, and 6, um, if this limit's not defined, then it doesn't really make sense to add or subtract anything to or from it. Same thing here, if this limit's not defined, you can't really multiply it by anything. Um, same thing here, limit's not defined, you can't divide by anything. If the limit's not defined, uh, it doesn't make sense to raise it to an exponent, and so on and so on. So the limit has to be defined in order for it to make sense. Uh, also, even if the limit is defined, it has to be a finite number. So that's another technical detail to worry about. Um, so if limit as x approaches c of f of x is infinity, and if limit as x approaches c of g of x is also infinity, you know, uh, infinity minus infinity is not necessarily zero. It could uh, actually be anything. It just depends on what kind of function you have there. Um, we'll see some examples of that later on, but for now just remember that in order for any of this to make sense, uh, these limits have to exist and be finite.